Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and the system that you see here on the uh, bench is a 122 day old European Nightcrawler system. Over that time it's been fed 12 times and I'm here to give them their 13th feeding, an assortment of asparagus, carrots, potato peels I believe. And this is the system where we've been feeding in a different location each time. And we've always been giving ourselves a 10 day interval in between the feedings. So this coffee filter here shows when, where we last fed and when we last fed was 10 days ago. So since we've been following a, a clockwise rotation, switching corners each time, makes it really easy to remember that, you know, this is where we were last time to feed maybe, I think it was banana peels. And then that was 10 days ago. We go to the next corner counterclockwise. 20 days ago, I think we had put cantaloupe in here or cantaloupe rinds because I believe cantaloupe rinds were what was fed into this corner even the previous time. <laughs> and then even going back to here, long ago we had fed pumpkin, but it included the stem, so many times now we've gone around and around. The pumpkin's, the pumpkin's stem is still here, but it's breaking down, making progress. I can't recall the type of food that we put in there. But uh, going back to this corner, the most notable food item that's been put into this corner is avocado. Three avocados cut in half, with everything inside other than the the pits remaining you know given to the worms to eat and for whatever reason the avocado was not making a lot of progress so last time we were in here 10 days ago to feed we we tried to blend in all that avocado um, fruit whatever vegetable matter onto nearby neighboring um, bedding bedding materials that we could find so I don't know maybe the reason it wasn't being consumed was because it was a big clumpy mass. I thought maybe spreading it out might help. So following the, the clockwise pattern, since this was where we last fed, indicating indicated to us with this filter, we're feeding here back where the avocado was. That was the reason we tried spreading stuff around. It'd be nice to see that that avocado would finally start making some progress. But you know, we're going to have to come here anyway, because that's where the food goes today. We always go counterclockwise, sort of a little time warp, so that once we get back to here to feed we've had a chance to check in on how the 10 day old 20 day old and 30 day old feedings as well as even the 40 day old feeding if there's anything left of those cabbage bits because it's interesting um i'm thinking i think it was banana yeah i can already see a piece of it right here piece of banana peel which is something the worms definitely like but it is a tough material and it does take them a little time to break it down and we've got a coffee filter here, as well as some coffee. The coffee is so obvious, it just somehow doesn't look like the neighboring castings, right? It's perhaps darker in color or something, I don't know. So, you know, I've been always trying to take the coffee and at least try to make sure that it's not all piled up on itself. Sort of similar to the, um, the idea taken with trying to help the avocado along was to spread it out, make sure it's not in a big pile or a clump. There's a good amount of moisture down in here. And it was kind of weird. I didn't think that the banana peels would kick off a lot of moisture, nor would the coffee. And <laughs> totally forgot about this. So even though I'm not prepared with any sort of uh, illustrations, we do have what's remaining of the printout of the illustration from last time. I don't know if you can read it. <laughs> I don't even know if it's upside down or not. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it is. It's right side up. So the corner that we're feeding in had avocado in it. <laughs> and more. Oh, mashed potato? Oh, mashed potato. That was the original first feeding. This is where we would see the... <laughs> Can I clean it off enough to see? Oop. Oops. Okay. So those are the cabbage stems. All right, we've kind of put a tear into our nifty little diagram here. Hopefully the worms are enjoying it. These are all just, you know, bedding, basically. As much as they like their kitchen scraps, they also really do need um, leaves, paper, whatever, any sort of carbon-based materials that they can uh, supplement their diet with. So they cannot live on bread alone. They need their bedding, which as much as it sounds like just a place for them to go sleep... <laughs> It's also uh, the, car the primary carbon food source that they need in their diet. Jeez, so much moisture down here. I usually don't like examine the bottom section in the um, you know intent of seeing how moisture is. So maybe that's just the reason I'm surprised because I've not really gone down there 
thinking that way. What do we got here? Banana peel. Some more of our <laughs> diagram. Um, more banana. This, this, all this white looks like maybe there was actually some banana within the peel. Or no, maybe that white is just the, the diagram. All right, so banana, coffee, 10 days down the road. It appears to be making pretty decent progress. Well, we're going to put it all right back where it was so we know where to find it next time. Hopefully it's all buried. should be for the most part. And there's a good number of worms hanging out there enjoying it, right? So that's kind of cool. Moisture, though, seems a little bit too damp in a way for me. Kind of makes me wonder if we should alter the way the plastic covering was on here. Now, what did we have in here previously? Cantaloupe rinds, right? But 20 days is practically three weeks. So I guess it's not surprising to find a piece of the, you know, the outer rind, that really tough portion of it. It's practically like wood. But all of the actual melon and all, you know, the majority of the soft portions of that material is long gone at this point. The only thing that remains is a couple slower composting, tougher bits of that feeding. And I don't think we should expect to see a whole lot of that in future check-ins. So once again, cantaloupe rinds, I guess we probably shouldn't have expected to see a whole lot of leftovers of that, especially after the time that's passed. And it's bothering me that I can't remember what we had placed into the next corner. <laughs> I clearly remember the... That's a banana stem, but I don't really know where it belongs. <laughs> Let's just throw it in here with the rest of the banana. It's much further along, though, you know, than, um, than 10 days, that's for sure. Well, whatever it was that we placed in here, as I remember, it was something that was a kind of a fast composting food item, whatever it was, and... I probably wouldn't expect to see many leftovers of it, if any, but maybe just a hint of what it was. Even if we don't see whatever the last feeding was, we'll at least get to check out the pumpkin stem. Jeez Louise. As soon as I, like, finish filming and start walking back upstairs, that's when I'm going to remember what was placed in here. Because I don't think I'm... Oh, potato. Was that right? Potato peels? Which I th imagined after... 10, 20, 30, over a month, or a month or so, that it would be gone, right? But uh, I can, you know, there again, kind of like with the cantaloupe, they'll nibble off all the soft stuff, and what remains is the actual peel now of the potato, which still needs, you know, to be worked down, but they'll always go after what they can and save the rest for later. Once again, a pretty busy corner, but before we close shop on this corner, we always like to check out the stem. What I had placed off to the side was just a little chunk of the stem that I chipped off with my thumb during one of our recent check-ins. Once in a while I'll do that, but I uh, I just think that I should be a little bit more careful with it, because I would rather prefer to see how the worms do as far as breaking it down, rather than how I am able to break it apart. So, it's just so weird. Like a worm just retreated into the stem right there when I touched them. So the inside of this thing's got to be porous or full of holes or whatever because the worms are clearly not claustrophobic and go right into the thing. That is so cool. Now, before we continue, I just wanted to make sure these two little guys, I can see them out of the corner of my eye, out of my lower peripheral vision, but I just wanted to make sure that they're okay. It seems like they're not trying to skedaddle out of the bin. I just sort of disrupted their feeding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this was kind of cool too. I just noticed these couple cocoons. One fa fairly, you know, bright in color. Looks like a little lemon <laughs> or a lime. Right next to it, the dark one, the brown sphere. Very far along, if not already hatched. But that's like a, a fairly new cocoon right next to a, a fairly uh, mature one. So I thought that was kind of cool. All right, back to work. The only thing to be done here, I believe, is just to pretty much make sure that this is back where it belongs. 
This end of it is always really tough, but I can kind of start to poke my finger into it a little bit, so it's softening up. It's interesting, too. So we'll uh, get this corner covered up, check in on the avocados, the smeared around avocados, and then make room for the, the carrots and the asparagus and potato peel assortment. Um, here the material doesn't feel as damp, but we're not down at the bottom yet. I'm starting to get this feeling like um, the plastic coverings need to be put on a little bit more loosely or perhaps not all the way out to the edge and just give this material a little chance to start airing out, possibly shedding some of its moisture. Let's just bring this whole shebang right up to the top so we can see what's all this um all this really light color material is the inside of the avocado and scattered throughout it at this point. You'll see fragments of the the shell. You know, it was just so soft already after all this time last week when I wanted to smear the inside of the um, avocado around. I, uh, I couldn't really keep the shells whole. They just snapped and broke and shattered as I touched them. And it's great to see a lot of worms in here working this stuff. So I'm glad that that's happening. And I guess we're going to sort of increase the whole um, frenzy feeding frenzy situation down here by adding even more yummy stuff for them to work on for us. So now, where did we have all those large chunks of bedding? I was just thinking that if we're putting frozen stuff in here, it might be kind of nice to sort of insulate it a little bit. And I thought we had, where was it? <laughs> At this point, you know, I, I guess the reason I'm taking all this extra time for doing this is because I would like to include the new feeding with some form of bedding except you know a system that's this age I'd really rather see it utilize and deplete its existing be uh, bedding supply versus adding anything new so that's just my main idea for that here we go <laughs> get some good use out of these paper bits so we could drop today's feeding on top of some sort of recycled bedding rather than just nothing. All right, a little detour. I guess I thought I'd save time by not bothering with any prep work and diagrams and looking into the numbers and stuff. And now, just because I was unprepared, I guess, <laughs> or didn't plan ahead, it feels like we're taking a, a great deal more time somehow. Maybe not. Maybe it's just coming across that way. I guess... To me, it seems like not a lot of time has passed because this is fun, I got to admit. <laughs> I just enjoy doing this. It's so relaxing, but, but I also don't want to, you know, either bore you or put the little wormies through too much undue stress of being disrupted in their feeding. So let's try to get this feeding completed. I don't even know if I can dislodge these bits and pieces from one another, but you saw how popular the potato was in that other corner. So I think it'll be just a, as much of a hit over here. All right, and there's a good bit of it. And since it was frozen, it should aid in the breakdown. And carrots, I usually give carrot peels. But these carrots evidently went bad. So my mom decided to donate them to the worm cause. And I thought there was something other than the potato and carrot in here, but I could have been mistaken. Oh, asparagus. Asparagus, very fibrous, tough material. Stuff's gonna take a little while to break down. So there too, if we ever see an end to the avocado saga, it'll just be continued in the form of um, <laughs> the asparagus saga. So, oh geez, here too, we're bringing like all these worms right on top of the frozen material here. And geez, 122 days old. It really makes me wonder if I've been adding sufficient bedding, if the system's got the bedding that it needs for the worms to be happy. Um, I see so many people go at a system that's pretty much in a fairly mature state such as this, and then they just pile in all this um, extra fresh bedding, and, and then they don't sweat it. And it's like, well, it'll take as long as it takes. There's a fairly new cocoon. And I'm so tempted to just give them a big, huge mound of generously portioned bedding right across the top. There's a little 
piece of veggie. So you know what, I'm gonna follow my gut. Seems like the right thing to do. Just feels like we've been kind of stingy on bedding lately. So we'll put the feeding zone indicator on once we've applied that thin layer. I'll be right back. We'll be utilizing my pre-made bedding mix here. It's leaves and paper, cardboard shredded, all moistened, even sort of uh, inoculated with some castings material to just give it some sort of a little bit of a kickstart so it's not just sterile material being placed into the worm bin now. We, um, we did talk about wanting to let this system get a little breath of air, I guess, to let some of this moisture flash off. So I'm not going to cover the edges out on the perimeter because there I'm going to put the cover plastic back on in such a way that it doesn't really go all the way out to the edge. And hopefully that will start allowing the system to um, kick off a little bit of what appears to be excess moisture in here. I'm sure the worms don't mind it, but I just think it would be better off with... Um, perhaps just a slightly lower degree of moisture in here so and i'm definitely curious to see what starts to happen over here you know is is it possible that our little worm friends are craving bedding maybe it's been running low because i don't think i've been adding a great deal of it at least nothing fresh like you saw before i've been trying to recycle and reuse the old stuff in the interest of not having castings that are littered with a bunch of um leftover bits of this and that but it's um it does seem like the worms are going to appreciate or at least that's what i'm thinking you know i'm wondering how how it's going to be received hopefully they like it hopefully they move in and start nibbling on it oh yeah i was going to give them grit but i'm not going to upend the feeding at this point but we'll throw a little bit onto this bonus bedding that they're getting and we'll see what happens if we don't forget Maybe we'll just come in here and it'll be a big pile of castings and we'll, we won't even remember what we did here. <laughs> but I've got a feeling it's going to be well received and i got a feeling that the worms are going to make good use of it too. So, that's all there's left to do here other than cleaning up and putting away, but I'm not going to keep you around for that. I'll take care of those things once I'm done filming here, but before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching.